Welcome back to another sort of Convalaria video. I'm Epitetsu, and we're going to talk about should you summon on this banner that's coming up. It could be a good banner, it could also be kind of a bait banner, and well, let's just go ahead and get into it. Garcia may look cool to you, but unfortunately, she's what we can call a low tier or a B tier, basically, unit. And that's just because there's better options, and yeah. But if you really like her and you really want her, by all means, go for her, summon her if you want. We're just giving you information, you make the choice. So, let's go ahead and see the base stats here. 211, 148, 70, 59, so on and so forth. Now, we look at the main stats, and we're thinking, okay, these are okay, these are doable, so on and so forth. You know, decent defense, HP, etc. You know, what's crazy is, like, the speed. So, Painful Cutting is basic attack. Single target attack deals 33% physical damage three times when used against an injured target. Crit is increased by 25%. So, if they're not injured, you're not getting the crit. So, that requires them to be injured, which usually means low health, etc. So, HP must be below 70%, reduces damage dealt by 20%, and increases damage taken by 20% is what injured is. So, if they're not injured, you're not going to get that effect. Physical damage, it's called execution time. Single target attack, Garcia deals 120% damage. She gains one stack of rotational acceleration when defeating the target. If she has six stacks of this acceleration before attacking, her damage is increased by 45%. That buff increases attack and defense by 4% per stack. So she can have six stacks. That's 24%. But she has to do a single target attack and then gains one attack of, like, rotation. So, that's a really long buildup. Hidden Executioner is her passive. If there is no ally within one tile of the target before attacking, inflicts isolate and uh, no dodge on the target. The effect lasts for two turns and can be activated up to one time per round. So, there we see with isolate, the character becomes immune to allies' aura effects. So, I don't see it as overly useful. Spinning Blade is the skill, physical damage, instant, it is an instant. Garcia selects one enemy with a cross-shaped range around her and drags them to her side, dealing 70% damage and recovering 2 energy while defeating any target. Now this is a cool move just because it can be used in a tactical situation. The issue is if there's a better, you know, character that you can build that has something similar, then you're going to use that character over Garcia. But if you didn't have that character, then yeah, you could put a little bit into Garcia and use this move as a tactical or strategic type thing. And that's what sometimes makes a character useful or niche. Doesn't necessarily make them, you know, top tier or good. Just means that you could set up a strategy for using another unit to wipe out a really tough unit in, in PvP or just PvE or whatever. Alright, last skill, support, instant. Garcia dispels three debuffs on herself, recovers 30% HP, and gains potential burst, lasting for one turn. So, potential burst increases attack by 20%, defense by 40%, and grants no attribute def uh, debuff. So... Overall, just a weird unit, to be honest. It's just like a mixed bag, kind of. So you might be on the fence about Nungle, and we're going to talk just a little bit about Nungle and give you some more information. As always, you should always summon for whatever character you want to go for, but having more information can help you make that decision. Nungle is a high damage with ultimate skill, but is more of a in-game kind of unit, so it gets stronger towards, like, in-game. It's uh, one of those units that's effective when paired with specific teammates and has certain kinds of equipment. Uh, pretty simple equipment requirements, relatively easy to build. Uh, one thing to note about Nungle is that the energy recovery and critical hit rate synergy uh, has that with certain marks. So there's her basically at base, and then here is when your max stats. We see very good physical attack, and the magical attack is pretty good too, so almost kind of like a hybrid unit here. Um, good magical defense, uh, pretty good base, regular defense, decent health, so 106 speed, not bad. Uh, marking bullet, single target attack, Nungle deals 85% physical damage and inflicts move 1 and the hangman's mark. If you don't know move 1, being attacked by a certain skill causes the character to receive additional effects from that attack, and then that's the hang men's mark. Uh, move one controlled description reduces movement by one tile. So these are good debuffs to put on 
uh, a unit. So we have an attacker, physical DPS debuffer right here. We have sniping distance. That's a support skill. It's also instant. Uh, gain sniping stance, so on and so forth. So there you go. And sniping stance increases the maximum range of range skills by two tiles. Increases attack and crit by 15%. Unable to move, this effect cannot be immunized or dispelled. So getting this um, increase of attack and crit by 15% is, is a pretty good buff. So I like that. Um, moving stance removes sniping stance and grants speed 2. So that right there is pretty cool. So good good buff. Sense of purpose is a passive skill when attacking enemies who have the hangman's mark. Increase crit by 30% and crit damage by another 30%. This is one of the things that makes Nungle so good. And of course recovers one energy when they land a critical hit. So absolutely just just awesome. Like she's uh, she's literally basically like an, considered an S tier unit. If S S tier is the top, she's S tier, and that's like a high S tier. Um, deadly aim, physical damage, single target attack, prepares for one turn, then deals 160% damage to the enemy, which ignores block. That's another good thing about Nungle. It ignores block. So somebody's got block, she don't give a crap, she's going to shoot right through it. Your shield is like paper to her. Now, when attacking enemies, the hangman's mark increased crit by 60%. Now you're starting to see where she's such a high, highly valued unit. It's just a lot of crit, a lot of crit damage, being able to penetrate through block. Just remember, this is max though. This is a, this is high tier build. Okay, and uh, right here, another sports skill recovers three energy, reduces skill cooldown by one turn for three turns. Deadly aim does not uh, does not need to prepare for one turn, and that is an instant skill. So this is one of the things that just makes her really great. Is this a huge banner to summon on? Um, for her, it's a good shot. I would do a multi or two, but that's probably all you want to do. Why? Because you want to save for who? So yeah, Etta, Legendary Watcher, she's coming, going to be really good. So with that said, um, yeah, I'm going to hit this banner, maybe a multi or two, see if I can grab Nungle probably. Uh, I'll probably throw it up as a video. If you decide to go for that, do the same thing is what my recommended thing would be. As always, do whatever it is that you want to do. Just make sure that you got something so you can try to go for Etta. Guys, remember to be well, be epic, take care. We will see you in the next video.